Hey, how's it going, guys? Right, so in this tutorial, I want to share an example on how we can use asynchronous programming to speed up making multiple API requests in Python. So asynchronous programming is a type of programming that allows for operations to run concurrently. And asynchronous programming is often considered as an advanced topic due to its complexity, debugging challenges, risk conditions, and resource management. And as someone who works with uh, REST API pretty frequently, by using the asynchronous programming or the asynchronous Python library, I'm able to cut down the time to make multiple REST API calls by at least 50% or more. And for this exercise, we're going to uh, use Yahoo Finance to demonstrate the usefulness of asynchronous programming. All right, so um, what we're going to do here is we're going to download multiple tickets from Yahoo Finance. So for example, uh, let's say I have a list of tickets that I want to download. And to download historical data from Yahoo Finance, uh, here let me apply the setting. So I'm going to change the uh, day period from, let's do five years. And I'm going to set the frequency to daily. Then I'm going to apply the uh, settings. Now here I'm going to right click on this uh, download button and I'm going to copy the download link. So this link is basically the uh, download link to the CSS file. Now I want to download multiple tickets and here let me copy the, the list over. Now also create a module uh, to time the execution. And you can download everything from the link in the description below, just in case if you want to uh, follow along. All right, so here uh, in this uh, timer functions module, I create two functions. One function is going to time uh, just the regular function execution. And the other function is going to time the asynchronous uh, function. All right, so let's go back. Now to demonstrate, so here, let me go ahead and paste my code snippet. All right, so for the libraries that I'll be using, I'm going to uh, use the string IO class to load the uh, data set from the CSV file. Then I'm going to convert the uh, CSV data set into a pandas data frame. And to make the request code, I'm going to use this uh, HTTPX library. So the difference between the regular requests uh, library versus this uh, HTTPX library is this HTTPX library allows you to make Asynchronous uh, request calls. Then I'm going to import the uh, time sync function to time the execution. All right, so uh, here from the uh, context manager, so I'm going to say from httpx.client, I'm going to specify my header and I'll name the context manager as client. So we can treat this as a client session. Now here I'm going to convert the string into a variable called URL. Now here, I simply just want to make this uh, Adobe uh, ticker symbol into a variable. So let's name this as ticker. And we're going to pass the uh, ticker argument to this variable right here. I need to make this uh, as an F string. Then you can uh, use the client object, that request. And I'm going to make a get request and I'll pass the URL. And from the response, I'm going to load the text and convert the text into a string IO object. Then I can load the data set using pd.readcsv method from the uh, pandas library. Then I'll export the uh, data set as a CSV file. All right, so I was doing some exercise before, or test run before. All right, so let me delete the data files. Now here I'm going to create a main function. So basically inside the main function, I have a list of tickets in this uh, text list, actually not list, uh, this uh, tuple object. Then I'm going to iterate each ticker, and I'll pass the ticker to the download data function. Then I'll export the uh, data set individually. All right, so uh, let me go ahead and run the script. And here I am using OK. All right, so let me fix the tab. All right, so let me try again. So if I run the script, now it's going to uh, iterate each item. And let's like the script's finish. And here, uh, it didn't create any file. Let me see. 
Okay, anyways, because I forgot to code the main function. All right, so let me try again. So if I run the script, now it's going to iterate uh, each ticket and download the data set. Now let me just go ahead and open one of the CC file. All right, so we have the uh, record set from July 16 all the way to July 13, 2023. So for the past five years. The whole execution took about 10 seconds to run, 10.7 seconds to be uh, more exact. Now if we take the same procedure and if we run the execution asynchronously, we can make the execution maybe one second or less. Now to convert the regular function into asynchronous functions. So I'm going to simply copy everything to the other uh, script. Now in Python, if you want to run the uh, functions concurrently using the asyncio uh, module. So I'm going to import asyncio and this is a standard library. Now, before I uh, use the asyncio library, make sure that you use Python 3.5 or later because the asyncio uh, library has a major update after Python 3.5. Now in Python 3.5, they introduced the await and the async uh, keywords. So the await keyword will basically convert a request into an await object. And so if you want to convert these two functions into uh, asynchronous uh, functions. So first, for each function, we're going to insert the async keyword. So I'm going to do this for uh, both functions. From the uh, context manager, I also need to insert the async keyword. Now, these are just some of the context that you will have to remember how to uh, insert or when to insert those uh, keywords. Now, let's look at line 10, which is going to be this uh, client that request method. Now, when we make this uh, request code, now when the request is waiting for the response, now with the asynchronous programming, that means that during the downtime, we can uh, use the time to do other things. So therefore, we can convert this uh, statement into an away object. So I'm going to insert this uh, away keyword. Now for other methods or functions like uh, these functions, because uh, these two functions and this one is actually uh, an object uh, creation. Now these two functions, because uh, pandas library is only using the regular functions. So unfortunately we cannot convert those two functions into away objects. Now with the HTTPX library, the library supports a single uh, library, it allows you to run uh, the functions concurrently. Now here we need to swap the uh, client class with the async client class. And this would be time async. Now let's go to the main function. Now when it comes to running uh, the script, so the position is going to be a little bit different. So first I'm going to put the tickets uh, outside in the uh, main routine. Now, because I'm running the functions uh, concurrently, so here I'm going to insert the away keyword. Then from a synchio, there's a uh, function called gather. So basically, what I'm saying here is I want to gather the results once the uh, functions are finished. Now, in this case, I want to pack the responses into a tuple object. All right, so here I want to use the download data function. And let me uh, insert the loop. So it's going to be a loop comprehension. So I'm going to say for ticker in tickers. Then I'm going to pass the uh, ticker variable to the download function. Then I'm going to uh, insert the wildcard symbol to unpack the results into a single array. And I'll put this right here. Then I'm going to store uh, the outputs as results. Then I'm going to return the results object. Now, because from my download data function, I'm not actually returning any object from the function. So every time when this function finishes, it's going to return uh, none. Right, so here, let me just demonstrate. So I'm going to print result, and this should be uh, results. And I'll print the results object at the end. And this should be time async. 
All right, so this is basically the implementation converting the uh, regular functions into asynchronous functions. So we made several changes. So first we change from client to async client. Then here we convert this uh, statement into a, an await object. Then inside the main function, we use async get the function to collect the uh, responses. And to run the function, we'll have to use the async that run, and I'll pass the function that I need to execute. Now, if I go ahead and run the script, and hopefully, okay, so it uh, looks like I have a typo somewhere. Okay, because uh, the file is open, I forgot to close the file. Now, let me try again. So that was pretty fast. All right, so let me go ahead and run the script. All right, so it looks like the script is finished. And the whole execution took about 2.5 seconds. And the entire request code took about 1.08 seconds. Now, as I mentioned before, because our function is not returning anything, so therefore, he will have uh, 22 non object returned. Now, to make sure that our data sets are downloaded uh, successfully, so I'm going to open one of the files. Let's open this one. All right, so if we look at the file, we have the uh, the same uh, record set for the uh, past five years. And I think for this company, they didn't become a public company until 2021. But here's the uh, entire uh, historical data set uh, for this company. All right, so this is going to be everything I'm going to share in this video. And hopefully you guys find this video useful. And feel free to post your question or your feedback in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed this video, Please don't forget to give this video a like and click on the subscribe button. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.